retrospect, I remember reading Craig Bartholomew, where he was saying, basically, that is the competing and greatest, he felt, threat. Now, we know that the church is going to be victorious. Nevertheless, you read individuals like Philip Jenkins, who have basically said that there are places where Christianity was once really high and now are complete wastelands. Do you think that we're in danger of seeing that here? in the United States, in the West. I mean, it is in some respect that way, but you're also seeing the stirrings of revival. Do you think it will go completely vacant from the Christian faith? Both and, isn't it? Uh, it if any cultures, you know, anyone who says, you know, persecution is great for the church, well, hello, Turkey, right? You know, <laughs> uh, you can't say that anymore. Uh, and I think what you're going to see is a very different church. You're going to see a chastened church. And I, I kind of used it in the past. It's a bit like Detroit. Detroit bloated, and then the world situation changed, and then uh, the car industry collapsed, and Detroit collapsed. And, but the way tr Detroit reinvented itself was it looked at the suburbs that were far flung and they couldn't sustain the infrastructure and their houses, and they let nature take it over again. And they reinvented Detroit as a much more sober minded, smaller, but maneuverable city. I think that's how the church is going to have to operate in the West. It's going to become a cohort on the margin, perhaps a, the creative minority line that we talk about, the creative minority, rather than holding the centre of power. And as things change, you're getting reactions to that, right? You're getting angry at reactions or despairing reactions. You're getting crowing reactions from secularists who think the church should never have had a, a place in the, at the seat at the mm -hmm. table at the same time that they live off the, the land uh, that Christianity gave them in that respect. So I think you're going to find the church a chastened church. I think unless you get matters of what it means to be human, who what a human is for, who a human is for, some of those things that Alan Noble talks about in his book, You're Not Your Own, mm -hmm. unless you can get those sorted out in the church, you'll see a tail off among young people who will not buy into the uh, anthropology of the biblical anthropology because the other gospel of self is pulling them away. At the same time, like ships passing in the night, you're going to see young people who've pulled the lever of I can do me for as long as I want, and it's not working. And so Tim Keller's last article in The Atlantic before he died was mm -hmm. uh, the seeds of the American church, you know, the revival is there. He, he could Revival could come. And he said there was no, you know, uh, monasteries, in you know, that were keeping the culture alive in the mm -hmm. Benedictine times until there was. There was no reformation until there was. There was no great awakening until there was. Hmm. And his last line in that article, very poignant given that he died, was, you know, Christianity does not go from strength to strength, but from death to resurrection. Hmm. And I think something has to die in order for something to rise. And part of that dying might be our hopes and dreams and expectations that, are, that we will hold the centre of power Part of what might mean to die is that we will be wealthier and better off than our previous generations or more influential. And what might have to die is that sense of this is about me because we've bought into that culture ourselves. Never mind the culture doing it. Uh, we do it. What does it mean? So death to resurrection is always the way that Christianity is going to grow. 